we have a bit of a problem here that we're going to solve and the problem is that uh, you're at an observation point 20 centimeters above the axis of a dipole the distance between the poles of the dipole is 40 centimeters you're 20 centimeters uh, above along a line uh, perpendicular to the axis of the dipole and uh, located right at the center so this is also 20 centimeters in length so the question is to determine what's the pole strength of an isolated pole in Ersted centimeters squared given that the magnetic field intensity at the observation point is 500 nanoteslas so you might <clears throat> you might turn the video off or pause it at this point and see if you could solve that problem. The uh, 500 nanoteslas, I guess you, you, you would want to think in terms of, well, where is the resultant vector field intensity pointing over here, over here? Where does it point? What are the components of the magnetic field intensity associated with both a positive and a negative Pole and how do they resolve in the x and y directions. So here we have, um, <clears throat> you know, again the observation point is equidistant between the uh, two poles, a distance 20 centimeters away, and we know that by convention, just, just following the lines, uh, the field line conventions that we've uh, already talked about, that the magnetic field, the lines of uh, field intensity will converge on the negative poles and will emerge from the positive poles. So the uh, field, field intensity toward the observation point from the positive pole will be along a line pointing outward towards the observation point and uh, likewise for the field intensity produced by the negative pole, it will lie along a direction or a line pointing towards that uh, pole. So, <clears throat> again, the question, what, uh, what is the orientation of the resultant magnetic field intensity? And so just using the conventions, we know that the field intensity associated with the positive pole of the dipole will form a vector oriented in this direction, that with the negative pole, a vector oriented in this direction, and we know that we can project, uh, let's say, the positive pole onto the x-axis, and so on. So, now we don't know, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that these scales are correct, so that, that would be something that you would have to figure out, but we know that the net field strength at the observation point is 500 nanoteslas. Uh, what, is the what is the orientation of that vector? And uh, so we can take the projections onto the x-axis of the vector field intensity produced by the positive pole and the negative pole so that we get these two vector contributions in the x direction, actually in the negative x direction. Likewise, we get two contributions in the positive and the negative y direction. And you can see that they're going to cancel each other out. So what is the correct scale for the projections? As you're, as you're going through this, you might think about, okay, what, how am I going to be scaling this, uh, this plot over here as we resolve the vectors uh, into their x and y components and sum them together? Well, uh, we've made the problem fairly easy because we've got a um, right triangle here, the, the um, tangent of this angle theta, the side opposite over the side adjacent, uh, 20 over 20. We see that the tangent has a value of 1. The inverse tangent would then be 45 degrees. So along the y direction, the components of the resultant field, whatever they are, associated with the uh, positive and the negative pole, they're going to cancel each other out. Uh, so 
h sub y is equal to 0. h sub x, on the other hand, we've got a component from the positive pole, a component from the negative pole. Uh, they sum together and they form a resultant vector which points off in the negative direction on the x-axis and has the value of the magnetic field intensity observed at the observation point. So h sub r is equal to this h sub x, or 500 nanoteslas. Now, field intensity, so we now know what the vector orientation of the field intensity is. Um, we know, we obviously, this is given, and we know that it's 500 nanoteslas. We also know that field intensity is equal to pole strength over distance squared. In CGS units, the pole strength has the unit ups, the unit pole strength, and, need a close parenthesis there, and h, the units of h are ups per centimeter squared. So, one ups per centimeter squared is an ersted, that's equal to 10 to the fifth nanoteslas, and we have h is equal to ups per centimeter squared, equal to an ersted, h is equal to a force per pole strength. Uh, it's equal to a dyne per ups. Just as a reminder, you know, we could express um, magnetic field intensity in terms of ersted, or dynes per ups. One dyne per ups would be equal to one ersted. So in this diagram, it you know it, it's worth maybe taking a look at it. I'll go pausing and taking a look at it. I'll go go over it kind of quickly, but the magnetic field intensity in the x direction associated with the positive pole is going to be equal to the magnetic field intensity in the positive uh, of the positive pole whatever that is uh, times the cosine of 45 degrees so that's going to be equal to minus 0 0.707 times h plus the magnetic uh, uh, field intensity of an individual pole in this case the positive pole Similarly, we have the same thing for the negative pole. It's also pointing off in the negative direction. That's So we know that it must be 0 0.707, the cosine of 45, times the pole strength, the, the magnetic field intensity, rather, of, of, an, of an isolated pole. So both of these are 0 0.707 times their respective, um, in the, the respective intensities of either the positive or the negative pole. So we have this relationship over here that the absolute value of the field intensity associated with the positive pole is equal to that associated with the negative pole, and it's in the x direction. And we can just refer to that as uh, the field intensity um, in the x direction associated with the pole. So h, the field intensity in the x direction for the positive pole would be h, x, and p. So it wouldn't h, x for the negative pole. And this would be equal to 0 0.707 times h from the positive pole. And we know that that must be equal to 250 nanoteslas because these two projections onto the x-axis have the same value. So the field intensity associated with an isolated pole is going to be 250 nanoteslas divided by 0 0.707, or 356, 353.56 nanoteslas. And again, we just have that the field intensity of the positive pole is equal to the absolute value, is equal to the absolute value of the field intensity uh, associated with a negative pole is equal to h sub p. We know that h sub p is equal to 353.56 nanoteslas. So, uh, we know what the field intensity of an individual pole is. We know that these two poles together give rise to a combined field intensity at the observation point of 500 nanoteslas. So we're at this point now where we already we know what the field intensity of an individual pole is. It's 353.56 nanoteslas. Um, this is actually a standard international unit, and we also know that h is equal to p over r squared, so that the pole strength is equal to h times r squared, 
So we need to know what r squared are, r squared is. Um, you might see this right away without doing this, but r is equal to 200 or 20 centimeters squared plus 20 centimeters squared equal to 400 plus 400 would be equal to 800 centimeters squared. A square root of 800 centimeters squared, or, or I don't know what that is, but we don't need to know what that is because our, we're after r squared. And r squared is 800 centimeters squared. So the pole strength, um, <clears throat> we know that, that the field intensity is equal to the pole strength over r squared. So we have, from that, we have that the pole strength is equal to the field intensity times the distance squared. And this is what we're after. We're after the pole strength, and we have the pole strength is 353.56 nanoteslas times 800 centimeters squared. Well, this is kind of a mixed units because this is a meter kilogram second unit, the nanotesla. And centimeters squared would be a CGS unit, so we don't really have a pole strength of nanotesla centimeters squared. So we need to convert nanoteslas to ersteds. We know that one ersted is equal to 10 to the fifth nanoteslas. One nanotesla then would be equal to 10 to the minus fifth ersteds. So that we have an easy conversion here, we'll just, in order to get it into uh, CGS units, we've got 353.56 nanoteslas times 10 to the minus fifth ersteds per nanotesla times 800 centimeters squared. And if you go through all the multiplications, you'll get 2.83 ersted centimeters squared as the pole strength. And that's the basic answer to our question. Hopefully you were able to to work through that, or if you didn't try to, you might go back and just kind of follow the uh, logic. Uh, the next time we're going to talk about corrections, the corrections for magnetic, uh, magnetic data in most cases for exploration purposes is fairly straightforward, is not as difficult uh, and, and time consuming as it was for when we were working with gravitational fields and making all of those corrections, the free air, the boog air plate, the elevation, and tide and drift and so on. So you'll find this, uh, you'll find the corrections for magnetics uh, quite a bit simpler. So we'll, uh, thanks for joining us and we'll talk to you next time.